High atop the Kremlin tonight, a Soviet flag at half-staff, a symbol of mourning for Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev, President of the Soviet Union, General Secretary of the Communist Party, for 18 years, the power behind those Kremlin walls. Good evening, this is the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. The death in Moscow of Leonid Brezhnev, 39 days before his 76th birthday, came as no real surprise. He had been very ill for several years, reportedly suffering from a stroke, cancer, and heart trouble. But as expected as the death may have been, it nevertheless had a stunning impact around the world. For Leonid Brezhnev was a powerful man, and whoever inherits that mantle of power will influence the events of the world. Our coverage begins with Don McNeil in Moscow. The announcement of President Brezhnev's death came on Soviet television at 11 o'clock this morning, after many hours of rumor, uncertainty, and suspense. Leonid Ilyich Brezhnev. He died yesterday morning at 8.30, and the Soviet news agency TASS says the cause of death was heart failure. On the streets, the news spread slowly. It was the middle of a workday morning, and most people missed the television announcement. Crowds of people were going about their business as usual. Traffic continued to move normally. As the word spread, late edition newspapers sold more quickly. Among the people, there appears to be a sadness, and it's believed Brezhnev will be genuinely mourned. But Soviet sources say there is also some sense of relief, that possibly a new regime will offer a better life in terms of food and consumer goods, that it will at least break the congealed economic stagnation of Brezhnev's last years. There is also concern about who will be in charge in the future, and tonight there were long lineups to buy newspapers and hopefully get some information. Flags throughout the city, including the American embassy flag, are flying at half-mast. And in Red Square, preparations are already underway for the state funeral. Brezhnev will be buried here on Monday, after three days of lying in state at the Hall of Columns, just off the square. A state funeral commission has been named to organize the lying in state and the burial. Tonight, it was announced that 68-year-old Yuri Andropov, the former head of the secret police, the KGB, and a full member of the Politburo, will be chairman of that commission. In the past, it's been a good indicator as to who might get the top leadership job. And so, it's the first real tip as to who might become Brezhnev's successor. Don McNeil, CBS News, Moscow. Yuri Andropov is more experienced in foreign affairs and police state tactics than any other candidate to succeed Brezhnev. As ambassador to Budapest in 1956, he oversaw the suppression of the Hungarian Revolution. As head of the KGB for 15 years, he directed the Soviet campaign against the dissident movement. He has been extremely effective in suppressing the Soviet dissident movement, but in doing so with skill rather than with heavy-handed brutality. Andropov has been trying hard to shed his bad cop image. He left the KGB six months ago to improve his chances for leadership. His closest rival is probably Konstantin Chernyenko, 71, a Brezhnev protege. He's said to have very little experience in industry, agriculture, or foreign affairs. In fact, he's best known as an errand boy for the late Brezhnev. The third leading candidate is 68-year-old Viktor Grishin, whose experience mainly consists in running the Communist Party apparatus in Moscow. Kremlinologists agree that the choice of a successor will not have a radical effect on U.S.-Soviet relations, but the candidates are perceived to have different attitudes. Andropov has cultivated a liberal image in the West. He speaks English and has traveled widely, but his foreign policy views remain something of a mystery. Chernyenko is considered by some experts to be the most dovish of the candidates. He went further than Brezhnev in promoting detente and has written that U.S.-Soviet relations can be repaired. Grishin has been an outspoken hardliner on domestic and foreign policy issues. Whichever man is chosen, power is expected to remain within the circle of elderly men who make up today's Politburo. The real transition will come when this generation passes on. Meanwhile, some Kremlinologists believe Soviet uncertainty at home will inspire a reaching out towards the West. I think there is a much better than even chance that we are at the beginning of a period in which a real negotiation and real compromises are possible. The Soviet economy is in such bad shape these days that Brezhnev's successor, whoever he turns out to be, is expected to place domestic concerns first. That should make an early confrontation with the West unlikely. 
Bob Simon, CBS News, New York. President Reagan was awakened at 3.35 a.m. National Security Advisor William Clark telephoned to report the Brezhnev death. Although Kremlin watchers were warning of a period of uncertainty, the reaction here was calm and low-keyed. At a Veterans Day ceremony, the president read his unemotional letter of condolences to the Soviet Union, reflecting the fact that his relationship with Brezhnev had become tense and strained. President Brezhnev was one of the world's most important figures for nearly two decades. I would also like to convey through you to the Soviet government and people the strong desire of the United States to work toward an improved relationship with the Soviet Union. The White House put out the word that no U.S. policy changes are anticipated, and the president reiterated his intention to continue building up U.S. defenses. Officials spread the word tonight that the president will not attend the Brezhnev funeral. That decision after an intense internal debate with his foreign policy advisors on one side urging him to go as a way of demonstrating his statesmanship and his sincerity about improving relations. Aides say, however, the president didn't want to go, agreeing with his political advisors, who argued that in making this his first state funeral, Mr. Reagan would appear overly solicitous to the man who suppressed Poland and occupied Afghanistan. It's expected that Vice President Bush will be diverted from his current trip in Africa to head the U.S. delegation to Moscow. Leslie Stahl, CBS News, the White House. Moscow's communist rival, China, reported Brezhnev's death without comment 18 minutes after the Kremlin announcement.